So I got off of a 24 hour shift this morning and I wanted to make a little video about something I realized about addiction and the process of addiction. So when people relapse, uh, so any addict is always an addict. They will always remember and crave the substance that they used to be addicted to. It gets much easier over time, but it never completely goes away. It never completely goes away. Once you've been truly addicted to uh, something, unless you can remember the destruction it caused to your life, uh, how it prevented you from achieving your goals, unless you can consistently remember that, you are going to be tempted by it and it's going to be very difficult. And some people don't resist. That is why addicts relapse, even after years. I had a, a lady that did not smoke for 14 years. She was addicted to cigarettes and that did not and did not smoke for 14 years. And this happened yesterday during one of my shifts. She became addicted to cigarettes again and now she has COPD and she still smokes. Now she can't quit. Because with COPD came an added stress of life and people who use their addiction as a coping mechanism, which is most addicts, they relapse quickly, and as the situation gets worse, they get worse. At 1,000 feet, turn left onto County Road 1675 North, East Strawbridge Road. Because once in a grip of addiction, they become more dependent on their coping mechanism, which is addiction. And as addiction destroys their life, they try to... Take uh, the next left onto County Road 1675 North, East Strawbridge Road. You know, let's say something bad happens, right? Your wife leaves you, your kid, something bad happens to your kid, and you've now became Continue a mild East addict. Continue Road for one and a half miles. Or, or let's say your, your wife left you because you started using again or drinking again, right? You started coming home drunk every so often and getting into fights with your wife, and now she wants to leave you because she remembers how bad of an addict you were, how bad of an alcoholic you were. So she leaves you, and now you're just like excuse my language but you're like fuck this life man and then once that depression hits is how one of the avenues that people take into relapse the depression is the part that stops you from caring the only reason you addicts us everybody becomes clean is because we don't like our life the way it is but we forget why we don't like the life the, the way it is because now we don't like the life the way it is anyway, even though we're not addicts. That's when that depression hits. And then you just don't care. So if, you, if addicts give in to temptation, ever pretty much, and just try it once, like one more time, even after 10 years, the addiction restarts as if it was never over. Well, maybe not that bad. But if you have that good experience again and you forget about your worries for a day and you chill and you relax and you're like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm actually good. Then you're going to see, seek uh, refuge in that feeling again tomorrow when reality hits you. And there's a problem. Or even if the reality doesn't hit you, even if uh, you just chase you know continue on north squire lane for one mile even if you uh just enjoy yourself even if god gave you enough to enjoy yourself you're going to start making excuses and everybody does everybody does and it's a trick so I don't have a clue, to be honest, on what advice I would give uh, addicts who are in remission. Who are not, who don't believe in God. I, I have no idea. I mean, don't try the drug. We already know that if you try the drug, that you, you're going to relapse immediately. But, you know... I guess the only other thing I would say from a medical perspective, addiction is like cancer. You can be in remission from cancer and you'll be happy, right? And you're in remission from addiction, but you can go back into it, just like you can get cancer again. And it's just as destructive.
So it's very important not to do it. Now, people who are Muslim, who are addicts, they have another layer of protection. So the same advice goes for them. But if these people truly believe in God, they will do what God said and they will pray. That is without a question. If people are truly Muslim, they pray. And in prayer is the salvation from destruction of, uh, uh, you know, full-blown relapse of addiction. Although it is not what God ultimately wants. God also does not want to destroy you or trick you or, or have you do bad. In so God tells you... Feet, turn right onto East Ridgeview Road. So God tells us, pray. God says, and do not approach prayer while intoxicated until you know what you're saying. Then pray. Because God also says uh, in prayer... Take the next right onto East Ridgeview Road. In prayer is prayer protects us against indecency and evil and remembrance of God is greatest so God wants us to remember him and to pray so we can get help so any addict continue on East Richview Road for four miles any addict who relapses will find protection and prayer if they truly believe in God because you cannot pray while you're intoxicated so you have to choose between prayer and drugs and most of the time that prayer prayer will win so if you relapse but you stick to prayer you have a fighting chance you can still head to destruction don't get me wrong you know the devil is tricky like that but you have a fighting chance whereas a person without prayer has almost none so God says, and recite what has been revealed to you from your Lord and keep up prayer. Surely prayer keeps away from indecency and evil and remembrance of God is greatest. And the word for greatest there is Akbar. So when you see uh, Muslims say uh, in Arabic, Allahu Akbar, all that means is God is greatest. You know, it's anybody, any Christian will also say that same thing. It just means God is greatest. So if we behave in such a way to, if we say we're Muslims or Christians, and we behave in such a way that God is greatest, we choose God most of the time, at least, then we have a fighting chance from getting destroyed in this world. God says in the Quran, all you who believe, intoxicants and gambling, an altar set up and dividing by arrows or raffling, which is like gambling, are abominations of the devil. Avoid them that you may be successful. Because it will destroy you. Addiction will destroy you. Gambling will destroy you. If you want to be successful, avoid them. Surely the devil is trying to introduce hatred and animosity among you by means of intoxicants of gambling and to keep you away from prayer and to cause you to forget about God. Will you not then stop? This is what God says about drugs. He says the devil wants to keep you away from prayer with this. What is the only way uh, the devil can forbid a man to pray to get him high or intoxicated because God does not allow prayer then the one instance the one instance where God does not allow prayer is intoxication the only instance in every other instance God commands us to pray encourages us to pray tells us it's a really good thing to pray tells us why we should pray Prayer protects against indecency and evil, and remembrance of God is greatest. That's what the Quran says, and that's what it actually is. You take addiction into consideration, and this is what it is. And I made this video because relapse is always one inch away. You think the, uh, a relapse is 10 years away? It's one inch away, because if you relapse ever and you try the drug that you used to be addicted to, still are otherwise you wouldn't be trying it again then you are just an inch away from destruction and it's nearer to you than you realize so it's a warning from somebody that's been through it and God gives us protection so everybody everybody 
that's an addict should at least know, should at least know how difficult it is to be an addict, to be destroying yourself, to have such a lack of discipline because the desire is so much greater than your willpower. You need God because God is what you're missing. And if you obey God, read the Quran for yourself. Just read it, man. Just read it and try to understand the simple things. If you don't understand 50, 60% of it the first time, it's okay. When you read it again, things start to make clear. With effort, things start to make clear. But there are good advices in this book that you should just do on faith. You should just do them on faith and see what happens. See if your life gets better. I think the best way to start, this is the, like, I, I want to give this advice. If anybody ever hears this, I think this advice would have helped me before I read the Quran, before I knew what was Islam, while I was an atheist. It, it just like, to In ask me a mile, question. Turn left onto North Birch Lane, County Road 600 East. To ask me a question, what do I oppose you know, in these verses. Uh, I, I really recommend people uh, read and understand what is Sirat al-Mustaqim. Uh, because that is one of the basic, uh, most... In, in the in the Surah Fatiha, in the first chapter of the Quran, which m most Muslims recite, actually all Muslims recite during every prayer every daily prayer there is a, a line there in Arabic says mustaqim. so guide us on a straight path so then God says what this straight path is or Prophet Muhammad is telling people what he was told to tell them what the straight path is uh, and so this is in chapter 6 verses 151 to 153 and then the other verses I would recommend people start with are I can't exactly remember but I think it's like 17 uh, chapter 17 verses 22 to 32 or something like that but in there's a block of the ver of verses there that uh, defines what wisdom is and God says in the Quran whoever is given wisdom is given a great mile, thing turn right onto the I-64 west ramp to St. Louis and coincidentally um the same the same uh, behaviors that are described as Sirat al-Mustaqim are also described as Hikmah. So people should read this and understand that this is the most important thing of what it means to be a Muslim. And Turn then right also understand the things uh, understand these things like uh, what why God commands us to do these things like prayer and stuff because they In a really, quarter mile, merge onto I-64 West. They really do help. They really, they really do help, and uh, that, that's all I have to say.